Ladies and gentlemen, I am your friend and humble narrator, Placid Dingo, or Brenton Clutterbuck. We are chasing Eris this time all the way to Jonesboro, Arkansas, where we are meeting right now with Pope Timothy Bowen and Pope Oolong XVI. Welcome, Pope Timothy Bowen. Hail Eris, hail Eris. It's good to be here. Pope uh, Oolong XVI. The 16th, that's me. I've been meeting up with Erisians all over the place in San Francisco, California, Austin, Texas, uh, Portland, Oregon. Jonesboro, Arkansas is not perhaps what I would have picked as a hotbed of Erisianism and subgenius. Uh, what are your thoughts as to why that might be? Well, here in Jonesboro, Arkansas, we're a very disenfranchised counterculture. We don't really have counterculture here. So if you're an oddball in any way, you pretty much are the counterculture. So uh, we, we, we have a very desperate, very loose-knit, and very uh, bizarre congregation of strange people that have kind of come together. Uh, Donnie, what, what are your thoughts on that? That pretty much says it. Um, just finding those like us, you know, it's like Tim Larry said, find others. Well, we found others from Australia and, and uh, from all over the world, and we love the insanity of it all. The whole world is completely crazy, and there's a few of us that realize it, and we're the ones that are called crazy. Hail Eris. Hail Eris. You've, uh, Tim, you've worked on uh, the Jones Barrier Discordia, and uh, Pope Oolong, you've worked on part two of the Jones Barrier Discordia. What can you tell me about uh, what you were trying to achieve in, in either of those uh, two texts? Well, with the first Jones Boya Discordia, I wanted to do something that was different from a lot of the other sequels to the Principia Discordia that we've seen out there, such as the Summa, the Apocrypha, the Metaclysmia, all really good books that really inspired me to write my own sequel. But I wanted it to stand out a little bit and um, I think the way that the first Jonesbury Discordia stands out is the amount of pornography that I included. And I think that pornography is, uh, is a beautiful thing. It's a testament to Eris's glory and beauty. And uh, so, yeah, there were a lot, of, uh, a lot more nudity in my book than other books. Uh, as for the second book, Jonesbury Discordia Part Two: The Search for More Money, um, it, honestly, we're just trying to get the book finished at this point. I've been working on it for about five years. Praise Bob. And uh, Donnie, what would you like to say about the part two, the one you're working on with me? It's a beautiful thing. There's a lot of uh, really great material in there, and I'm ready to see it um, hit the road. You know, I'm ready to see it out. Um, but I want to. I'd love for us to take the time and really build up something special with it. Um, it's all the craziness of life and everything and discordianism, but I think at a certain point it becomes something that's a passion that we can, that we can use to express ourselves. And that and it's a metaphor for bestiality and tooth decay. Here, here. A lot of people who've produced their own Arisian works do so because they want to express what they feel is, to them, the crux of discordianism. A uh, question to each of you, what do you see as the crux of discordianism, or the most important or the most appealing part of it to you? Um, definitely turkey cursing and uh, sodomy, pornography. I, I like to have a religion that celebrates butt sex as opposed to um, restricting butt sex. Um, I, I, I definitely feel that um, butt sex is holy and sacred and um, no pun intended. No pun intended. Yes. Um, I enjoy the social chaos and disorder that, uh, that we have the power to create in the spirit of the great Emperor Norton, um, Francis E. Deck, Esquire, um, and us three. We can be crazy too. Yay! Kill people, burn shit, fuck school. Yes. A couple of uh, questions just directly to 
you, Pope Timothy Bowen, um, on some of your projects. You worked for a while on another project called Voices of Chaos, uh, where you were able to ob obtain a number of interviews with figures who were large in the Discordian or subgenius scenes. Um, who were you able to interview as part of that project? Um, I, I interviewed a lot of people from uh, the Reverend Ivan Stang, who was fundamental in the creation of the Church of the Subgenius, to uh, Adam Go Rightly, the the person who wrote the autobiography on Carrie Thornley. Uh, to, there's an interview with Jonesboro's House of Averis' Science and Fnord Committee in that book as well. Um, that was conducted uh, under a lot of uh, intoxication. Uh, I also interviewed uh, a man from Bulgaria named Spartsman Rogis. Uh, he, he claims to be a Tasmanian porn star, but uh, he's really the, the front man of the band Electric Dragon, and uh, everyone should download all of their music illegally because they're really funny. And uh, yeah, and I also got to talk to Pete Carroll, which was a lot of fun because he's a ghost. It's really hard to get a hold of Pete Carroll. He doesn't have a Facebook. He doesn't have the typical ways of being able to be contacted that a lot of people have. So the way I was able to contact Pete Carroll was I took a class at Robert Anton Wilson's Maybe Logic Academy, and Pete Carroll was actually my teacher in a class called Chaos, Magic, and Business. And through taking that course, I was able to secure that interview with Pete Carroll. And of course, he didn't allow me to use any pictures of himself or personal information. Uh, personally, I think that Pete Carroll is the stage name and that his real name is Bill O'Reilly. Another thing that's uh, happened to you in more recent times is that your alignment has shifted towards evil, um, as you've become known as a figure called the Arch Brony. Can you please tell me about that process of transformation? Right, well it all started uh, a few years ago. I watched a, a children's program called My Little Pony Friendship is Magic. And a character named Pinkie Pie really started speaking to me and um, just really touched my heart. A uh, very heartwarming character. Uh, she's the element of harmony that is laughter. Laughter is sacred, especially in the subgenius and discordian worlds. And uh, so I, I, w I became a fast fan. Uh, around the second season, they started introducing a character named Discord, which really started ringing bells in my head and letting me know that this is a fandom I need to get behind and be a part of. Uh, next thing I know, not too long after that, uh, I see on my Facebook news feed, Jerry Springer's doing a casting call for bronies. First thing I do is pick up the phone and immediately start calling. As I'm in travel preparations with his show's producers, Tara Strong, who calls herself the Queen Brony or the Brony Queen. She's the voice actress who does the character Twilight Sparkle on the show. She tweeted, no pony go on Springer. Um, of course, I answer to a much higher calling than Tara Strong, so I said, you know, regretfully, fuck you, Tara, I'm going on the show anyway. And uh, I told Jerry Springer that I like to party, and that's why I relate to Pinkie Pie, and, uh, you know, got, got some message outs about Discord. This here subgenius button was able to be snuck in on my friend Autumn's uh, horn, which caused a lot, of, a lot of trouble. People were very upset that we were representing Rainbow Dash as a unicorn. People were upset that I was representing Pinkie Pie with a mustache. People were saying that, that we just misrepresent an internet collective of grown men who like a little girl's television program. And um, in general, I, I caused a lot of discord, confusion, bureaucracy, foreign affairs, and chaos on the internet. And uh, hail Aris. Hail Aris. Between the two of you, what are your hopes for the future of uh, Discordia inside of Arkansas, especially Jonesboro? Well, definitely now that there's a cure for AIDS, I'm hoping for a lot more orgies. And I second that. And I want to make everyone out there that sees this a pope, as you can read my t-shirt right here. Yes. And if that's not enough, spectacles testicles, brandy, cigars, you're all popes, especially you Lady Gaga, you're in my heart, Stephanie Germanata, if you're, if you're watching this, please get a hold of me, I love you, you are, you are the wind beneath my wings. You're both very creative people. I'm wondering if you can just uh, show me through interpretive dance 
the way that you think about certain things. Can you just show me through interpretive dance discordianism? Hmm. What about subgenius? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Emotions. <laughs> and finally, the curse of Greyface. <laughs> Pope Timothy Bowen, Pope Oolong the Sixteenth, thank you very much for your time. Hail Hilarious. Hail Hilarious. Hilarious. Beautiful.